Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Visioning Day. We are... We're delighted that you joined us this morning. Uh, we thank you so much for dedicating your time on this day uh, to the future of our, of our school. Uh, you have in store, we all have in store for us um, an exciting day of visioning the future of the school and of talking about and brainstorming how we might attain that vision. You'll notice behind me there are uh, drawings and, and, and words and, and thoughts from some of our lower schoolers about their vision for the future of our school. So perhaps as you're listening, you'll get some inspiration in listening to our youngest students. We also have some of our older students here with us today, and I'd like to ask all the students to please stand. Everyone here cares deeply about this school. Everyone here loves the school. Everyone here uh, has a stake in the future of this school. But this school is not ours. This school is yours. This is your school. And so for you to take hours on your Saturday to dedicate to the future of your school means a tremendous amount uh, to all of us and to the future students here. Uh, now it can be argued, since we had conferences yesterday and two snow days, that maybe this isn't really like a full weekend day, a sixth day of the week that you're dedicating. Uh, but, uh, but in all seriousness, it really means a lot that you're here. And so we're, we're really excited to work with you, to hear your thoughts, and to, uh, and to engage with you on what the future of the school could be. Uh, so once again, I want to welcome all of you. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, we have a, a rich day in store for us, and I'd like to introduce Hanita Walia, President of the Board of Trustees, who will continue the introductions. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming on a Saturday. Uh, welcome to Visioning Day. Uh, this is an important day in this process that we started uh, because it's a chance for all of us to envision an extraordinary future for our school, and you're all important part of that process. So as you heard me say before, we kicked off this whole strategic planning process in the fall. Uh, at a board retreat and we looked at our core values, we looked at our mission, we shared our core values with you in January and we shared the mission uh, with you uh, earlier this month actually. And you know, it was all the uh, research work that we did and everything put together, we came back with a revised uh, version of our mission statement because the last time we looked at our mission statement was in 1990s, so it had been a while. And this current mission statement is more reflective of the EMS of today. It's more relevant. And uh, so what we decided when we launched the strategic planning process was that we want to make it a more inclusive process. We want to hear everyone's voices, you know, uh, including our students. And here they are today. And we uh, started with a steering committee, a 19-member steering committee, uh, comprising of faculty members, admin, uh, trustees, parents, and we also had three working groups. We had the uh, research working group, uh, the communication group, and the visioning day group. I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the people who have been working so hard, giving hours and hours and hours, two hours meeting, going into four hours, you know, changing their schedules, being here in the evening, after school, rolling up the sleeves, uh, and this is the result of all the work that's happened up until now. So I would like the people that I call out, please stand up. I'm going to first introduce the uh, steering committee. Uh, Jay Agresta, Greg Armorkanian, Paul Bailey, Beth Brennan, Aaron Cooper, Robin Dillard, Catherine Ferreira, Amelia Gold, Rich Hahn, Kathy Camille, Laura Kotorski, Gil Mendelziz, Jamil Myrie, Rurik Nakarud, Stephanie Neville, Dana Ranawat, Phoebe Search, Claire Sheridan, Melanie Weinrub, and me. Uh, uh, 
so this was the uh, steering committee. Next, I want to talk about the research committee. So what this research group did was they did a bunch of external research, internal research. You all got that survey with all those questions which you answered. Thank you so much. We got over 600 responses. So we gathered all that data and a lot of what you'll see today in your booklets is, you know, based on all the research that has, uh, 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 we've worked on internal and external research. And to name the research committee, this was led by Paul Bailey and Kathy Camille. So Paul Bailey, Kathy Camille, uh, Beth Brennan, Greg Armacanian, Aaron Cooper, Jamil Mari, Rurik Nakarud, Phoebe Search, Claire Sheridan, and me. Uh, We then have the communications group that played such a pivotal role to let you guys know what we were doing, what was going on, where were we in this process, in the journey, and to engage everyone and to give you guys an update. And this committee was led by Robin Dillard and by Laura Kotorsky and Angela Thomas and Jan Abernathy. So thank you all so much. And of course, we have the Visioning Day Committee, uh, led by Dana Ranawat and Stephanie Neville. Yeah. Also, we have Catherine Ferreira, Melanie Weinrub, Nancy Dorian, and Keith Wiggs, who's been helping this group. Thank you so much. So here we are today to talk about next steps. So this is Visioning Day. So this is an opportunity for all of you to think a little bit, look at all the research that we have in those folders, and think about what do you envision for the school, the school that we all love so much. We want to hear from your perspective. And this will help us as we move forward. You know, where do we want our school to be moving forward, going forward 10 years and beyond? So this is very critical in our, uh, in our next steps. And uh, I think to explain this whole day better, I'm going to invite Christina, who has been uh, working with us from day one, and she will walk us through the process of the day. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. good morning, everyone. Good morning. You'll be able to hear me in just one second. Um, I am mic'd, and I will have volume in just a moment. It's great to be here. Thank you for the refreshing weather. I'm from sunny southern Florida. So I'm delighted, but I'm a Bostonian by birth. So I'm absolutely just delighted to be here and be refreshed and get to wear some winter clothes and boots and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, so welcome to Visioning Day. And I'm so happy to see this table right here. I really am. So I've been doing this work for 20 years. And I must tell you guys that Every single visioning day that I facilitate for a school, uh, the results of that day are, are memorialized by, not to put too much pressure on you guys, but by what you guys say and do. And you have a very important voice in this day, and there's this process. So I welcome you, and I, I want to extend my appreciation for your investment in your future. Um, so what I'd like to do to help you think about um, and get oriented to the day, the ebb and flow, the comings and goings, and your actual work and work product, I'd like you to um, open your folders. I know you guys have white folders because you have a different workbook, um, and that's why your folders are different. So your workbook's going to be a little bit different, but, um, but if you want to um, listen, uh, listen along, you'll get a sense of, of the day because you're your steps are pretty much the same. So let's take a look in your folder. And the first thing I'd like to do is I would like to orient you to the, um, to the ebb and flow of the day and pull out your visioning day agenda, if you would be so kind. Probably the first thing you'll notice is we're not in Gymkhana. Is that, am I right about that? <laughs> All right. So we have the great quality of being adaptable. Right? And that's part of strategic thinking, actually, is being adaptable to the circumstances over which you have no control and, and course correcting. Um, so we have course corrected, and we are not in Jim Connor, but isn't this space awesome? Um, and you will be in the assigned classrooms, you're going to be in the little school. You didn't know, but you were going to be in Mara House, but now you're going to be in the little school. And everything has been um, redirected. 
uh, to where you, so you have your group number, right? And you have your room assignment, correct? So you picked up your name tag, your group number, and your room assignment. Yes, it's on your name tags. Awesome, thank you. Um, no room assignments. Uh, groups, okay. So your groups, so just so all of the rooms are labeled. And actually before I close and send you off, I can read the, the group assignments <coughs> to make it easy for you. So someone remind me if I forget to do that, because I have a list right here. Okay, so, you, so you'll be going to your space. Your space has been set up for you with all the supplies that you'll need. And, you're going, and you'll be working from your workbook that's in your packet. And I'll, I'm going to go over that in a minute. You have the, an allotted time. You'll get in your space by 9.15. I'll wrap up my comments by 9 o'clock. We've given you 15 minutes to move. If you get into your space before 9.15, please start. Um, you don't have to wait till 9.15 to get going. Um, so you'll be in your space, and you'll be working until 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, we expect that you'll be finished your assignment, and you'll be coming back here, and you'll be posting one sheet of paper, which is your, vision, your draft vision statement that your group has arrived at, including you guys. And you all have your, your allocated space to post under, so you'll know where to post when you come back. You're coming back with one sheet of paper. You will have produced a lot of other work, in the morning exercise, you're going to leave that behind in the room at the beginning of the, uh, the morning exercise. You leave everything in your room. What I would invite you to bring back, however, is your participant workbook because I'm going to give you instructions for session two after lunch. So come back with your one sheet of paper, for, which is your group's work, and then bring back your participant workbook for a second set of instructions. When you come back after you post, you will, you're going to report out on the vision <coughs> statement by group. And don't worry about how that's going to happen because I'll give you those instructions when you get here. You'll also be given, as you come back into this space, you'll be, giving, be given two sets of dots, two different colors of dots, um, which we will use for voting. And you'll be invited to vote uh, on the four vision statements that resonate most with you, as well as indicate to us which, which words speak to your heart in particular inspiring or compelling. There'll be two different colors. Don't, don't worry about how that happens. I'll tell you that later. Um, but just know that you're voting. After you vote, you're going to help yourselves to lunch. You're going to stay in this space for lunch. My team is going to be counting all your votes. And we're going to be counting and um, uh, transcribing your vision statements, rank ordering them, printing them, so that when you finish your lunch, my team will, be, will have been hard at work at delivering back to you the results of your morning exercise. So right there on the spot, everything will be synthesized, and you will know what vision statements got the highest votes and so on, and that will help you. Um, that will be uh, one of the things that will be most important for you to know for your afternoon exercise. So at, a, at a 12.40, you, be, I will give you um, at least um, at the most, rather, a 10-minute orientation to the afternoon exercise, so you know exactly what you're doing when you, when you uh, get in your groups for the afternoon. Same groups, same locations. We're not changing it up. You will have data on the walls. You will, help, you will have hopefully established a healthy group norm, so we don't want to disrupt that. Um, so you'll stay in your same group. You'll go to your same room. You'll use your data from the morning, and you will begin the goal-setting exercise. Uh, after an hour and 10 minutes, you'll be back here at 2.10, and you will, you'll notice that we have move, we've allowed moving time, 10 to 15 minutes to move you. That's also a bit of um, um, extra time for you should you run a little long in your sessions. So just know that the time that we're reporting is the time that everybody needs to be seated. So that moving time, if you're running a little over, for example, in the morning, if you're not quite finished at 11, we're reporting at 11.15, and it's not going to take you 15 minutes to walk across the campus. So if you need that little extra time, please feel free to take that similarly in the afternoon. So you come back in the afternoon, you'll get dots again to vote, you'll post in your designated spot, we'll report out, we'll do a few wrap-up remarks, and then you'll be out of here by 3 o'clock, my commitment to you. So that's why we actually did start on time. We, our promise to you is that we start on time and that we end on time, because we want everything 
uh, about your day to be well, every moment of your day to be well spent. And to that end, I just want to also alert you to the fact that the team um, has been assigned groups. Every member of the team, you've been assigned a room captain so that every need that you have, whether it's for information or water or snacks or whatever you need is being taken care of. So you have someone that's been assigned to you. And in addition to that, the team will be coming in and out of your classrooms so that we can hear what, what you're saying in your conversation. You'll notice that the team does not have uh, an assignment in terms of being your facilitator. Uh, you are going to actually self-select uh, a facilitator, and that's intentional. It's intentional because we want your input today, and we want to be a resource for you, but we don't want to dominate your conversation. So we'll be going in and out of the classroom so that you can actually use us as, uh, as a resource uh, person um, if you have any questions about either the procedure, the, the actual exercise itself, or you have any, um, any needs uh, for your group. So that's, that's the day. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, the packet that you have in front of you. And my, the first thing I would like to have you do is actually, um, if you would, pull out simultaneously, if you would pull out the strategic issues backgrounder and your st the strategic process and framework and the mission statement and core values because all of these relate. So let's look first at this document, which is the strategic planning framework that you're going to be uh, using today. The thing I want to point out to you about this is the circles. First and foremost, the circles are the core ideology that uh, no, even though we're doing strategic planning and we are going to be creating a vision that will have a five-year shelf life, the things that won't be changing will be these values and, uh, and, and mission. And they are on these sheets of paper, as Hanita referred to them. They have been updated um, based upon the input from this, uh, this community over the last several months. And now these are locked in place. These will become transcendent of future strategic plans. So it was a very critical point in time that you, many of you maybe participated uh, in, in the core values exercises that were done on campus. I know if you're faculty and staff, you, I'm sure you did. Uh, many, I look out and see some familiar faces from the parent sessions. Thank you for participating in those. And they helped us get grounded in what, the, what, what we stand for and what our purpose is. So every shape in this model answers a different question. The values answer the question, what do we stand for? The mission answers the question, what is our purpose? And then if you look in the middle of this schematic, you'll see that, tr that rectangle. That rectangle is a really, it's like a fulcrum, it's a really important piece of a strategic planning process. What that does is it tells us what it, 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 it asks us to um, do the research to tell us what the issues are. What are the issues that we're facing that are most critical? And where that comes from is this data. So you'll see this bound um, uh, portfolio of research information. I, saw, uh, I heard Anita ask who participated in the surveys. Yes, you did. Many of you did. Thank you for that. Over 600 people participated in the surveys. That information is in this packet as well as the re results of an external scanner of the environment where we did some uh, research into the social, technological, environmental, economic, and political factors that will impact your future. These are factors like the storm over which you have no control. And so it's wise to know what they are. And it's wise to prioritize those that are the, that are the most relevant because you can't address every factor. Every factor isn't relevant to your future. So what the strategic planning team did was it did the research to identify those factors that are the most relevant to the future of this school put those together with the internal strengths and weaknesses that you guys identified in the surveys, and we identified four strategic drivers. Does this, is this making sense, how it came together? Okay, so if you think about, so we're here, this is the piece that stays, per, that stays permanent now going forward. We're in the block, so the block 
is this data produce the strategic drivers. The strategic drivers are going to actually uh, direct your conversation this morning and this afternoon. And we are at the vision, uh, at the top of the hierarchy, the cascading hierarchy, so it gets more and more specific as time goes on. And we, to the, in this morning's exercise, we are answering the question, what does success look like for us? Okay, so what does success look like for us given the issues that we're facing? So the strategic issues backgrounder, in fact, identifies four drivers. And if you open it up, you'll see the four drivers that we've identified based on the research. Strategic driver one, an exemplary academic program. Strategic driver two, a transformative student experience. Strategic driver three, an engaged community. And strategic driver four, a sustainable EMS future. So you'll notice there's a little paragraph underneath each of those headlines. The paragraph under each of those headlines frames the issue. So what about an exemplary academic program is at issue, what is at stake? And, and, and subsequently for all the other issues. So when you get in your groups, the most important thing that we'll be looking for when the room captains come in and out of your group is that you actually have this page open because this is where the data is. This should be guiding your conversation. These are the issues I know many of you may, many, some, a few of you may have come in with issues that you feel you want to talk about. And that's absolutely fine as long as they fit these macro issues. If they don't fit these macro issues, we have a device called Parking Lot. And please, you're welcome to say whatever's on your mind, but I also can't let you derail your group. Does that make sense? Because we have a lot of work to do in a very short amount of time. So we want to honor what you've come in to say. If it fits the issues, great. If it doesn't, let's put it in the parking lot. My guarantee to you is that the team will read everything that's in the parking lot. I can't guarantee we'll do everything that's in the parking lot, but we will read everything that's in the parking lot. And you'll be asked to bring those back later today just uh, to make sure that we have every single one of those. So your focus when, you're get, when you get in your groups, and I'm going to go over your exercise in a moment, is actually going to be the provocative questions that are under each of these drivers. So you'll be looking at the framing of the drivers, and you'll be looking at the points of discussion underneath those drivers. Does that make sense? So we're asking you basically, what would you see if this driver was successfully addressed in the next five years? And then we're giving you points of consideration and points of discussion that all came from the research. So it all ties together, and that will guide your conversation. Okay, so that's what we'll be hoping that you and, and expecting that you're going to be looking at as you, um, as, you're, as you meet in your first session. And now let's talk about that first session. So if you could put that aside for a moment and pull out your participant workbook, which is on the right-hand side of your folder. Your participant workbook uh, establishes what we hope will be your ground rules. These ground rules are in place so that you can establish a healthy group norm which is basically that everybody is heard, that no single voice dominates, and that you all kind of play nice in the sandbox. <laughs> um, we intentionally are not selecting facilitators, recorders, or reporters. We're asking you to do that. So when you get in your group, the first thing you're going to do is introduce yourselves. No autobiographies, please. Just your name and your, maybe your students or your affiliation with the, with the school would be great. Um, and that should be done within five minutes. And then you're going to self-select who wants to facilitate, who wants to report, who's, who feels comfortable recording, and who's going to be the timekeeper. And each of the, the tasks of those individuals are spelled out on that page. And what I'd like to say most importantly is the facilitator is not pre-engineering an outcome of the group. The facilitator's responsibility is just to make sure that everyone's heard, everyone participates, that we're following the steps and we're keeping on time. The recorder is responsible for creating a visual record of the conversation. So it's really important that the recorder is comfortable standing up in front of people and actually writing on the paper that we have posted in the classrooms for you. It's not helpful to record in front of you 
either on a, on, a, on a laptop or on your own pad of paper or even a flat piece of paper, it's really important that you create this visual record because in the last 20 minutes, you're going to be scrambling to write this amazing vision statement and it's much more helpful to your group if they can look around on the walls and see a record of what you've talked about. So the recorder needs to be comfortable standing and taking notes. The reporter is going to be reporting out, needs to be comfortable being able to stand here, take direction, and report in front of 120 people. Okay, so those are the roles and responsibilities. And when you get, after you've introduced yourselves and you've got your, um, you've got your assignments, oh, I will say the timekeeper is really important as well. Because the timekeeper has incremental stops within the exercise itself, you'll see discuss this for 15 minutes per driver, discuss this for 20 minutes. So that gives you um, really a layout of the whole conversation so that you can get back here with a vision statement that you're proud of, proud of in the time that you have. So I would say with regard to vision statements themselves, um, what you're going to do is you're going to talk, so you've seen the strategic issues background, or you're going to have your conversations point, point two and three, in your workbook are all about those conversations that I already referred to. Part, part four, point four, is when you transition after your conversations to actually writing your vision statement. And this is the point in time when you should expect to see a room captain come in and kind of check on your time to make sure that you've transitioned to writing that vision statement because it's really important that you're not still talking, that you're actually now creating this, um, this statement of what the future looks like. So vision statement answers the question, what does success look like for EMS at the appointed time in the future, which for you is the year 2023. Um, so if I could give you an example of a couple of vision statements, I'm going to give you non-school examples now. And your room captains are equipped with school examples later if you need them. But I don't want to guide your conversation um, at this point. So I'm going to give you two non-school examples, and one of which you probably are familiar with. Um, but does anyone know Bill Gates' vision statement for Microsoft? You got it. A computer in it. You got it. A computer in every home and on every desk. That was the founding vision, not the mission, not, but the vision of what success looked like for Microsoft at its founding a computer in every home and on every desk. So the important thing about that, why I use that as an example, is it in fact, does it not create a, a word picture? One of the most compelling ideas of a, behind a vision statement is that it actually does create a word picture. And that's one of the things that makes it memorable. The other vision statement that I'd like to give you that many of you probably also know is, um, is President Kennedy's vision for NASA, not mission for NASA, but vi vision for NASA. Anyone know? Remember? Put a man on the moon and return safely to Earth by the end of the decade is the whole vision statement. So you see, that, is that not a visual? It's, got, it's time limited as well. So a vision statement is a stretch from where you are. It's a word picture. It's compelling. It's inspiring. And ideally, it creates such a dynamic um, vision of success that anyone who hears it or reads it wants to be part of making it happen. So that's what I'm looking for. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that you can create good, good vision statements, but can you create great ones? That's going to be the challenge. And my team will be coming in in the last 10 minutes to help move from good to great by asking you the question, where's the stretch? And the where's the stretch question is what is going to make your mission, your vision statement different from your mission statement. It's going to carry you to some place that you're not today. And that's what you want your vision statement to do. So on that note, I'm going to close my remarks, send you guys off to your groups, knowing that you have resources who are going to be visiting you and answering any questions that you have when you get in there and start the work. So have fun. If you have any offline questions, I'll be here for a couple of minutes uh, before I join the team. Oh, oh, the room numbers. Yes, uh, the room numbers. Hang on. Hello. Hi.
Hi, good morning everybody. I just wanted to quickly orient you as to where everybody is going. I'm Stephanie Nabel. I am one of the co-chairs of the Visioning Day Committee and thank you all for being here today. Um, if you are a student of this um, wonderful school, you are going to be with Miss Gold and Miss Search and you're going to the science room. If you, and everybody else has um, a group number on your name badge. Um, so I'm going to go through the, the group number and then I'm going to tell you where you're, you're going and who your point person is. So if you are in group two, your point person is Beth Brennan and you will be in the art room, which you can enter through if you go across the courtyard through that door by the um, solarium. If you're in group three, your point person is also Beth Brennan. Also go across the court courtyard and you're gonna be in the reading pod. If you are in group four, Paul Bailey is your point person and you will be in the Calabrium. You're gonna enter the same way. If you're in group five, you're gonna be in L16, which is Mrs. Ween's room. Um, so you can actually enter, there's a sign on the door which says group five. If you are in group six, you're going to Ms. Goldman's room. Um, and again, you can enter through the courtyard. There's a sign on the door and your point person is Jamil Miri. If you are in group seven, you're going to Mrs. Rhoda's room, which is actually downstairs. Um, so probably the best way for you to get there is through, um, I'm gonna say Mrs. Goldman's room and then downstairs. Um, and if you are in group eight, you are also going downstairs with Laura Katorski um, to Miss Lustberg's room. If you're in group nine, you're also going downstairs with Laura Katorski. Um, group 10 is Miss Pianco's room. Your point person is Rorick Nakarud. If you are in group 11, your point person is Rorick and you can enter through the group 11 door in the courtyard. And lastly, group 12, your point person is Claire Sheridan. Your entrance is marked in the courtyard. And there is an amazing project in the middle of the floor called Kid Town. Um, there is a town that is constructed with cardboard. Um, please do not disturb it, but you may look because <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and if you have any questions, I will be here and Yes, I'm sorry. So group eight is Miss Lustberg's room. Group nine is Miss L1. Sorry. Um, group nine is L6. Group 10 is L14. Group 11 is L12. And group 12 is L11. And I'll try and pull it up so it's up here on the board. And I'll be up here if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you. Most from you, with you. You may vote for your own, but you don't have to vote for your own. If you vote for your own, you may only vote tw once for your own. You may not steal, borrow, or barter dots. They must all be distributed. Okay? So, green dots, how many do you have? Can you vote for your own? Do you have to vote for your own? Must you distribute all the, red, all the green dots? Yes. Are there more green dots? No. Ah, perfect. I didn't even give you that, and you figured that out. All right, so red dots. You have 12 red dots. The red dots go on words or phrases that particularly speak to your heart, are compelling or inspiring, or in the best case, give you goosebumps. Because that's, uh, th that's the indication that that word would elevate a vision statement from good to great. And when I work with these vision statements at the end after today and I synthesize, I'm going to be looking for the red dots that may be on vision statements that didn't get voted in the top three. So it's your signal, it's your signal for me and for the team that this word meant something to you, even if it didn't end up in the final um, most voted for vision statement. You do not have to distribute all the red dots. You don't have to distribute any red dots. But if you put a red dot on a word or phrase, only put one on that word or phrase. And I have more red dots. 
Okay, so red dots go on words or phrases that speak to your heart. Do you have to distribute all the red dots? No. Do you have to distribute any red dots? No. Do I have more red dots? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now I would like the re reporters for every group to go stand by your vision statement, please, so I may give you instructions. Okay, so I need every reporter standing by the vision statement. Okay. So here's how I'd like you to report. I have, I need someone, group 12, yeah? Group 11? Everybody? Perfect. Okay, so here's how I would like you to report. I would like you to identify yourself, tell us your name, then tell us something nice about your group. And tell us if you had an aha moment, read your vision statement, identify any stretch words, and then we're going to clap and you're going to pass the mic to the next person and be reseated. So first up is group one. You're going to tell us who you are, say something nice about your group. Hi, my name is Sophia Davis and I think our group really work together well. In group one, we reflected on our vision for EMS in 2023. What we did differently was we made a word bank and we drew pictures of our individual visions of EMS in the future. And from that, we made up this vision statement. In 2023, EMS will be a modern, community of educators, students, and families who are inspired artists, athletes, and creative self-expressive -exp learners housed in an open, light-filled environment that reflects the community's passions and purpose. We can clap now. Thank you. <laughs> tell, us, tell us where you, Sophia. So Sophia. Sophia, you're so popular, honey. Could you come back and tell us where the stretch words are? What's different about where what's different about that vision statement from where you are today, would you say? <laughs> Maybe light field? And um, the passion. Okay. Maybe modern? Anything else? Um, like expressive learners and all the artists and athletes. Excellent. So that's inclusive, everybody, right? Awesome. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> all right, a hard act to follow. Um, our group is group number two. I'm Samantha Mora. I'm the middle school um, technology integrator. And um, our statement is, in 2023, EMS leads the industry with innovative centers of, excel of academic excellence that empower children to achieve their fullest potential. And Can our clap for that. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think our group just really worked together just amazingly. We produced so many sheets of, uh, and to constantly keep on boiling it down. This is literally boiled down from like 20 sheets almost. And uh, it, was, it was, you know, crazy. Um, and there's so much that we feel like we left out, um, but we know that that's going to be part of, you know, perhaps the goals in this afternoon. But I think our stretch really is the part about leading the industry. We, and that feeds that idea of putting our story out there and putting our story out there through these wonderful students and children that we have here. So that's really our stretch is we want to, you know, let the world know and lead the industry in um, how education should and could look. Awesome. So the word the, whenever you see the in a vision statement versus a, that's a stretch word because the is exclusive and puts you above the others versus a means you're one of many. The means you are the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Right. Nice work. Thank you, group two. <laughs> group three, please. Hello everyone, um, I'm George Staffos. Uh, my wife and I have had three sons go through EMS. We still have uh, Ted here in sixth grade. Um, our vision statement from group three is, 
Thank you, Kasha. Uh, in 2023, EMS will be a fully engaged community of excellence that is invested in each other and the world and is the benchmark for pre-K through eight education. All right, thank you. So, as I'm sure all your groups uh, were, our group was uh, incredibly creative and uh, uh, worked really, really well together. Had a great sense of humor, by the way, I might say that as well. Uh, you know, key themes that kept coming up were empathy, home, the school is a home, the teacher is a maestro, where's Ms. Gold? Oh, okay, um, and problem solving. And I would say the, the stretch word to phrases for us were, yeah, this is a phrase, but invested in each other and the community for various sort of virtuous reasons and is the benchmark. Um, that was important to us. Um, so thank you very Excellent. much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, group three. Group four, please. Hi, for group four, I'm uh, Rochelle Warsaw. I'm the art teacher at Mara House. And our group worked together beautifully um, just hearing all voices and um, everyone contributed a great deal and we whittled this uh, vision statement down to, in 2023, EMS will be the premier space for innovative and empathetic learners to pursue academic excellence through a growth mindset. Mm. Very nice. And, um, uh, the, the stretch uh, phrase or, or words, I guess, would be premier space. Um, and by space, we're really referring to an intellectual space, a social emotional space, and a physical space. And um, all of those combine to uh, create the environment in which you know, we seek the rest. Um, so, um, so that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Group Four. Nice work. Group five, please. Hi, I'm Rowan Davis. Uh, my lovely daughter, Sophia, opened up uh, reporting for group one. And Yay. that's my wonderful and noisy wife over there, Kasha. And Luke's somewhere here in the room, too. Uh, we have three kids who, have either, who are going to EMS now or have been to EMS. Zachary's in ninth grade. Uh, group five was a wonderful group. We had a lively and spirited discussion flying at 500 feet for most of the time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden soared up to 100,000 feet in our little you know, reconnaissance aircraft. Um, and we came up with our vision statement, which is, in 2023, EMS is recognized as the national leader in N through 8th grade education. Yeah. We'll clap and, for that. Um, there's so much about this statement that's fascinating. The stretch for us was the national leader. I think we played with at first metropolitan area, things like that, and then, wow, okay, let's actually go to national leader. Um, also, th some of the aha moments were, yes, going from metropolitan area to national leader, and also realizing that who we are as a school is N through eighth grade, and we are proud of it. That is part of what distinguishes us as a school. We, are, we, we don't have a high school, and one of the things that makes us incredibly unique and warm and special is that we stop at eighth grade. And it makes the middle school an, a, a really awesome experience for everybody and a challenging and, you know, and, a, and a meaningful one. Um, and I think that's it. Is there anything that's I, it. I left No, out? you covered yeah. all the bases. Thank you very much. Great work, group five. Group six, please. Hi everyone, I'm Allison Eggert. I'm Director of Special Learning Services here at the Elizabeth Morris School. Um, I think the idea of being great listeners was an attribute for our group. Everybody really listened to what everybody had to say, which was, what was interesting to me, initially everybody, you know, okay, let's do this together. But as we went along, people became very passionate about which words we should use and which words we shouldn't use. And I think that was a great group dynamic that as you come together as a group, all of a sudden, no, I really want to include this and this is really important to me and let's look at this again. And that really um, was ins inspiring for me. In uh, 2023, EMS is the dynamic learning community cultivating academic, social, and emotional excellence 
for tomorrow's leaders who will strive to improve the world. And our... Okay, we'll um, clap for that. Uh, cultivating, um, to me, is a word of inspiration and um, thinking visionary, as well as to strive. Um, are, are, I think were important words. We also spoke a lot about the importance of including all the domains of our community, um, the academic, the emotional responsiveness, the fact that if continuing a lot of what EMS does well already um, as far as community, um, environment, and a lot of those words inculcated a lot of the discussion, which was, was great because to us that's part of what the EMS community already is, so we could just um, build on the wonderful foundation that the school has established. Okay, thank you very much, Group 6. Group 7, please. Hello, um, I'm Colin Onur. Um, so our group, one, uh, we met down in the, in the math room, which was difficult to find, a very interesting place. Uh, two, uh, we had uh, people from uh, faculty, administration, um, and, and parents, and the interesting thing was how much we were on the same page and how much we brought different kind of perspectives and fed off of each other to come up with an with a end result, which I think kind of we all, we all felt uh, represented the uh, EMS school. So our vision statement is in 2023, 20, uh, EMS is the beacon for Renaissance learners, enlightening the path into the 22nd century. You clap for that. Very nice. So the stretch words are one beacon. Um, we think that we know the value of what EMS is and, and the community. One, we need to let the rest of the world know as well such that kind of we have more applicants and, and, and we can grow. Uh, but at the same time, we, the idea, one other kind of um, vision that we discuss is we are sending out the seeds of the apple tree to the rest of the world in order to grow the orchard and share EMS with the rest of the world. And, and similarly, I think kind of Beacon and the Enlightening kind of uh, gives that message. And then Renaissance is, it's old school, it's very fundamentals based but for the 22nd century. So it's both the old and the new um, is the kind of vision statement that we, <clears throat> that we came up with. Excellent, thank, thank you. you very much, Group 7. Nice work. Group 8, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Ovadia. I'm a parent of two and a teacher in Chilton House. Um, and our group worked really well. We were very enthusiastic. We had a lot of ideas. And I think one thing we did really well was ideas that differed from one another. We found the common ground and pulled out our thesauruses. Um, and we, by the end, we were like screaming out the same word at the same time. We're very excited. So it was great collaboration. In 2023, every student thrives and realizes their highest potential in a supportive and inspiring environment. Um, and I think some of the... Some of the stretch words were every, and that was really important. We talked a lot about 21st century learners and the different domains and how each children learn and how many types of learners we have. Um, and the supportive and inspiring environment, we were talking a lot about the physical and social, emotional, and collaborative and the community part, every different part that makes our school what it is. Um, so we tried to keep it concise, but we went from about 20, you know, 20 pages, also lots and lots of words, and just condensed it down. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Group 8. Good work. Group 9, please. Hi, folks. My name is Rick Lansdale. I teach 8th I teach eighth grade English and 6th grade history. They're all of my kids. Um, uh, kudos to Group 9. We wore out our reporter's uh, hand with um, lots and lots of uh, writing on the board. We went through two or three of those pens. Um, our, our statement here is, in 2023, EMS will empower all students to bring their personal best to the community. Our stretch is personal best. We've spent lots of time trying to figure out the way to describe artistic athletic, academic excellence, and this is what we came up with. 
when we spoke about community, we meant this community, the community at large, the global community, and decided to have it there. Um, we, again, were flying at 5,000, rose up to EMS students will change the world, <laughs> and came down to something a little bit more manageable. Thank you, group nine. Group 10, please. Hello, everybody. I am Taraka Patterson, a uh, parent of twins in second grade. And our group did a, a fantastic job at speaking our minds very uh, openly and really allowing a lot, all the ideas to get out there. And I think there were some cool paradigm shifts that happened in the midst of the conversation um, that ultimately led us to Entwined. I'm just kidding. I told them that I sing, and so they said I had to sing the message, but I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> in 2023, EMS will cultivate empathetic and ethical leaders to passionately engage and contribute in an ever-evolving global community. Thank you. Our, I think our stretch really happened at Ever Evolving. Uh, actually, our, the whole thing was a stretch, I'm not gonna lie, but Ever Evolving, um, it, it, interestingly enough, it kind of informed the conversation which revealed that we, this is just a dynamic process and there's constant shifts and, um, and perspectives that need to be uh, taken on, omitted, changed and, and to exchange between faculty, students, parents, in order to get a proper gauge of who are we, uh, where are we, and what are we doing, and where are we going, um, there has to be the willingness to be constantly evolving and, and making sure that evolution is defined in terms that are relative to who's actually a part of the conversation and to actually acknowledge who's a part of the conversation and all the things that make them who they are. Awesome. Thank you very much, Group 10. Great work. Group 11, please. I'm going to start until my cameraman gets into <laughs> So, my name is Liza Hards, and I'm Director of Auxiliary Programs here at EMS, and also a proud parent of two students, and um, celebrating my 26th year here at school. So... We, we had a wonderful group, and um, I was amazed that we have a parent that is not even started yet at school as part of our group. So that, to me, was just so <laughs> So inspirational to know that we're already thinking towards the future with our parents that are committing to us now, and really being part of this process is so impressive. So thank you. <laughs> so our vision statement was in 2023, EMS will provide a passion-driven education to develop confident, creative, and happy students. Thank you. I think our, our stretch words, we talked a lot about this passion-driven piece and what that means and what that brings to our community. Um, so that was a great conversation there. And you see that we, we still had a... We left lots of scrap paper over there, but um, this word happy, as much as a very simple word, was really our stretch word. And we kept coming back like, well, can we, we had the thesaurus out and all these things, can we find a d different word for that? But then we didn't want to. And that's what we feel it's about, that happiness, so. Excellent, thank you, group 11, good work. Group 12, please. So my name is Catherine Schlatter. I'm an alumni uh, from year, <laughs> just, you know, like a decade ago. Um, I have a fantastic group. We were teachers, we were alumni, we're parents, and we really came to such a vision um, of sharing words and what was folded into words and the different meanings of words. Anyway, without further ado. We wanted it to be quite snappy as well, which was important to our group. So we went with empowering students with balanced community-based learning. And I should say that balance for us was a very important word. Balance in everything, 
whether it's in curriculum, in technology, in work, in play, most importantly, in risk-taking, in spending, in investment, balance came up time and time again. Community, uh, we wanted to use the word global, but we figured that really we are a global community already, so just saying community was part of that. The many, many layers of diversity we talked about, we talked about um, all the stakeholders and empathy being a big part of community. And as well, the four C's being five C's, with the last C being community. Um, empowering, well, we felt that everybody in our community should be empowered, not just the students, but the parents and the teachers and everybody else who's in this wonderful community. So, okay, it. thank you, Group 12. Great work. Okay, so we've heard from all the groups. You know how you're voting, correct? You're voting four green, uh, one green dot on every vision statement that resonated most with you. And look for those that are most compelling and inspiring. After you voted, please grab your lunch and enjoy your lunch. And my team, please meet me at the podium to find out about counting our dots. If you choose to write a goal for every strategic driver, your worksheet is on page five. So it's already there for you if that's the way you choose to go. You just need to fill in the blanks. And a goal, remember, is also at 30,000 feet like the vision statement. It's big and it, it's broad and it's qualitative. So the first, you're going to make two decisions when you get back into your group. The first will be which vision statement are, going, are we going to work with? You may work with your own, by the way, if you're group 10, 7, 1, or 4. Um, and you're, you are then going to make the decision, are we going to deconstruct this vision statement and write a goal for every one of the main ideas? Or are we going to write a goal for each of the strategic drivers? And if you choose to do this second, your worksheet is right there. Now some of you may zoom right through this. My expectation is you, I'm going to have at least one group who will get this done in 10 seconds. So what do we do for the rest of the 50 minutes that we're together? You're going to go where you've really wanted to go all day, which is to strategy crafting. So there's another exercise following the goal setting exercise on page, let's see, it's page six. And the difference between goals and strategies is that goals answer the question, what must we achieve to reach our vision? Strategies answer the question, how will we achieve it? And that's why I say that's where our minds want to go. So not just EMS, every group I've ever worked with, this is where we want to be, because our minds want to solve problems. We want to address solutions. But first we have to answer the big what questions before we answer the how questions because if we're asking the wrong question, we'll get the wrong answer. So choose the vision, set the goals, and then if you have time, feel free to go to the strategy crafting worksheet, which is then on page seven, and it asks you what major actions will activate, uh, will, will, must you take to achieve this goal? So how will you achieve this goal? So you have an hour, you're getting back. Uh, we are tracking perfectly. Um, so you'll be getting back in 10 minutes. You'll be back here at 2.10. You're going to repost. If you could listen to this instruction, it would be really helpful. Um, bring back your goals. Post only your goals because you're only going to report out on your goals. If you've done strategies, um, you can bring them, but but leave them, I would say, bring them to the right, thank you. And please also bring back your parking lot, because I guaranteed you that we're going to read those. We, we need to transcribe those and read those. You may leave everything else in your rooms. The team has responsibility for restoring the rooms to their original condition, so they know what to do with all the back sheets and all of that. So all I need you to do is bring forward your goals, and your strategies so that I can see them, but we're not reporting on them. Post your goals and give us your strategies and your, um, and your parking lots. You'll also get voting mechanisms when you come back in. You'll get 12. And make sure that you have a reporter, because we'll do the same drill. You can change reporters if you choose. But we're going to do the same drill. We'll be reporting, voting. We'll be reseated for a few closing remarks, and you guys will be out of, out of here by 3. All right? And any questions, remember we have room captains coming around to answer any questions that you have when you get in your groups. So go do some goal setting.
engagement by all constituents. And number six, in 2023, EMS students are global citizens shaping the world. Very nice, group two. Thank you very much. And group one. Our, we're group one, and our, I'm Grace, and our vision statement is, in 2023, EMS will be a modern community of educators, students, and families who are inspired artists, athletes, and creative self-expressive learners housed in an open, light-filled environment that reflects the community's passions and purpose. Hi, you know me already. I'm Sophia Davis, and we chose to do, um, we chose to reflect from our mission statement, and to be modern is to have, a, which is a physical space, a vibe of school, student voice, an input in environment, or just new. <laughs> to have educators, students, and families is to boost financial health and have equity of voices. To create artists, athletes, and creative self-expressive learners is to have diverse individuals opportunity for, and opportunity for all learners. Hi, I'm Julia, and to have a school that is housed in an open, light-filled environment is its new multi-purpose facilities, and to demonstrate our passions and purpose is a mission statement, outreach, and brand. Excellent. Thank you very much. Great job. I'll take that. Thank you. Great job, Group 1. Okay, so you have 12 green dots. It's going to be a tough one, but I need you to distribute all the green dots, one for each goal that you particularly res resonates with you, and then please be reseated. Do it as quickly as you can and be reseated for a few closing remarks. In doing such good work. So... If you could kindly take your seats and I'll fill you in on what's happening next. So, as you are sitting here, all of these vision, all of these goals rather are being photographed, transcribed, counted and rank ordered. They will be delivered to me in a report by late the, tonight or early tomorrow morning. I then have the great joy and privilege of synthesizing all of your work. So that's why you saw the voting at two different levels. You saw the, um, you saw the red dots and, and the green dots this morning, so that I have the opportunity to look at where the red dot words may not have been on a winning vision statement, but in fact really captured the imagination and the heart of this community, right? So that gives the ability to synthesize, gives me the ability to go ahead and bring those words into the final uh, potential final vision statements. So my job will be to create that synthesis. I will give back to the strategic planning team two or three versions of what I think are exemplary vision statements based upon your input today, the combination of the green dots and the red dots and all of that. I will also build for them based upon your work in the afternoon and goals and strategies. I will build for them the whole architecture back to that schematic that I showed you very early this morning, vision goals and strategies. You have generated enough information here today for me to actually build that architecture. So I will then create those three levels, again in draft form. The committee will receive all of them. They will deliberate. They will refine, change, update, whatever they choose to do, and agree on a final version that will then go to the Board of Trustees for approval. The Board will approve a vision and a set of goals that will give direction to this institution going forward for the next five years. So the board's job is to set direction, and that is done through the vision and goal level of the plan, which is why I kept pushing you to think big and think, think um, directionally. So they're, they're thinking, what is the future direction? You've contributed some great ideas to that. We have a sense of where your mind's at with regard to that with regard to the votes, both sets of votes. So we have a lot to work with. I'm excited to work with all of that, get my report back. Um, the last thing I want to do before I um, invite you to share some of your th thoughts for a couple minutes is to tell you that you're invited back again, not to a day-long event like this was, but if you, again, remember the architecture of that model that we're using, 
the most detailed level of the plan, which someone referred to was really where they wanted to be today, there is another opportunity to get there. It's called Initiative Drafting Day. That is April 25th. Mark your calendars. You will be invited back to a sh much shorter session, no more than two hours. For the parents and board, it will be in the evening. For the faculty staff, it will be in the afternoon. And it will be your opportunity to propose the, what projects, programs, and activities you feel you can do to advance this vision, goals, and strategies that will have by then been adopted. So this is your chance to get into that, the very granular level and to propose ideas that you may have for how that can be advanced and also to tell us what you think you can do to advance this, whatever the final vision is. So that's my work and our, your work, our shared work uh, of, of the community over the next couple months. Um, and before I pass this off to um, Aaron for a couple of closing remarks from him, I'd just like to give you an opportunity to share what you appreciated most about your time together today. What did you appreciate most about your time together today? Pop up, I have Jamil and I will run a mic to you. So who would like to say something? Be first. Okay. I loved was the children. I was so inspired by you all and the fact that you woke up early, you came here with some resistance, but then how you transformed it and enjoyed the process. And I feel like you listened to each other, you had lots of energy, and that's what I wish for you in your classrooms, is that you take this experience and you use some of these tools that you learned that, you know, you, what you put in is what you get out, so. Thank you, awesome. Another comment. Remember the camera. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, camera. <laughs> Another comment. We have a comment right behind you, Jamil. Yes, um, I enjoyed being here today, and I at first didn't want to come here. I'm like, Dad, we, it's the weekend. We've been off school all week, and this is the day we're supposed to be off. Why do we have to go to school? <laughs> and then I came, and I really enjoyed it, and it was fun being with my friends and uh, talking about the experience and what we want for this school. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Who else? Yes. Is that a hand in the back? Oh, a hand in the front. I'll come to you. Um, I just loved the incredible diversity of voices within my group. And I'd be willing to imagine everybody's group was like this, but just within my group, we had teachers, we had Kathleen Visconti, who was in admissions. We had parents, um, everybody from an incredible array of backgrounds, opinions, and ways of looking at things, and ways of looking at language. It was just, uh, it was a great experience, fantastic experience. Awesome, thank you. Um, I appreciated that this conversation is taking place on a general level, it's just uh, refreshing. Um, uh, definitely, it reinforces uh, a trust in the community where my children are, who are my most, just the most important thing to me that exists. And, um, and I also appreciate the accountability that gets created by getting to put these ideas out there and giving the opportunity to present them and now being able to actually follow up on, on things and be an active participant and part of the shaping of an environment that's just this important, so, I, yeah. Right, thank you very much. We have time for one more comment. We have another comment? One more? Oh yes, okay, Claire, you get Claire? Jamil's gonna be the last one to comment, I think. I just wanted to say, as a member of the Finance Committee of the Board, I thought it was fantastic that the group that noted that we needed to boost our financial health were the students. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. All right, so give yourselves a round of applause. You've done an awesome job. Thank you very much for sticking with it. Good, good work. And Aaron, it's up to you. I want to add my, my words of thanks. First, I would like to start by recognizing Christina Druin, our consultant, our facilitator, uh, the person who built the whole architecture we worked in today. Thank you, Christina. I started this morning by thank you, thanking you for dedicating your time today, and certainly I continue to thank you for that. Uh, but even more so, I want to thank you 
uh, for your thoughts, for your perspective, and for your wisdom. Um, I find it quite inspirational. And uh, while you were all having lunch, the uh, strategic planning team was, was back in the workroom typing up all the different visions. And as each person walked into the room, they came in looking at the visions up around, uh, up around the room and had the same comment about, wow, this is amazing, this is really inspiring. Look at the thoughts that are here in the collective um, on these 12 different sheets of paper. And so I think that uh, we have all succeeded, I think, in, in beginning um, a, to articulate a roadmap for the future of the school that is quite inspirational. And in articulating a vision that is shared by the entire community. And I think that shared notion is incredibly important because it can only be as successful um, and the school can only be as successful as it is united and as the students and the faculty and the parents are, are, are of the same mind um, in terms of that vision. And that transcends so much. And quite frankly, it transcends leadership as well. And knowing that the step I'm taking and the transition that we have for leadership in the school to, to know that we're going to have a, a shared vision that was the seeds of which were created today here by all of you and by all of us um, gives me great confidence in um, what that, that means for the future of our, our school. So again, I want to thank you deeply for the time and even more for what you brought um, from your, your minds and your hearts um, to this for our students. So thank you, and Hanita. So Christina and Aaron have said it all, and I'll be all dying to get home. But I will add my thanks to Christina for really being such a huge part of today and for this whole process. Thank you, Christina. And thank you to each and every one of you to come out today and spend the time for your perseverance, for your creativity. To, I know we were all challenged, you know, how do we set up those vision statements and goals, and, but we all did it. I think we all learned something about ourselves in the process, so uh, it was an incredible journey just to be with all of us. And we were marking the time, you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., but this went by really quick, right? We got a lot of good work done. And as I was walking around the room uh, reading and those words and those statements and those goals, there was commonality. So, which is good. We all are kind of thinking along the same line. So this will be easy as we're articulating them into goals and vision and the road that we want to go on. And that is why we were very purposeful when we said in our mission statement, shared purpose, this is a shared journey. This is a shared purpose. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and for this incredible day. Thank you so much. Thank you.